<clears throat> Sports, war, and history, and a story based in Bozeman. Let's go, Steve. That's what drew me to research the legend of the Golden Ghosts of Montana State College 70 years ago this spring. Following the surrender of Germany, the college released the names of 11 students killed during the war who were members of the Bobcats' pre-war football teams. In a country starved for stories about war heroes, these 11 men were suddenly proclaimed to be from the same team and called the Golden Ghosts. Newspapers around the country loved the story. In November 1945, radio host Bill Stern shared the story with a national audience on the country's most popular sports radio program. But in 1941, this entire Montana State College team enlisted and marched away to war. And every single member of that team was killed in action. Not one boy came back alive. In 1960, a plaque was presented to the college by the Alumni Foundation and now hangs in the Brick Breed and Fieldhouse. The names of the, 11, the original 11 student athletes plus two more representing Bill Stern's 1944 All-America team of football players from 1940 and 41 are listed. The story is close, but not quite. So what is the real story behind the Golden Ghost? Just five of the 13 players listed were on the 1940 football team. Two were on the 1941 team, and two guys never played football. They were on the basketball team. <laughs> the other four were on football teams during the 1930s. They did not all play together, but Montana State's losses during the war is, is still a pretty remarkable story. After years of research, including visits with family members and a couple of trips to Europe, I have no doubt that each individual on this plaque is worthy of their own presentation. They were from big and small families, urban and rural, children of miners, ranchers, farmers, immigrants, and in most cases, the first in their family to attend college. Each loss devastating to the family and their com communities. I'd like to introduce you now to some of Montana State's golden ghosts. In early 1942, Dana Bradford of Townsend became the first casualty of the group just four months after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. A fourth generation Montanan, Bradford had been married only a few months when his B-25 crashed on a night, night training mission. Wendell Skabad of Glendive, one of the basketball players who first played at the University of Montana before wisely becoming a Bobcat, and Alton Zempel, a 1941 player who grew up on a ranch near Forsyth, were both killed while training to be pilots. Zempel, just two weeks before the, surrender, before the Japanese surrendered. Johnny Phelan grew up in Butte and worked in the copper mines. After two years as the Bobcat quarterback, he joined the Army Air Corps and was co-pilot on a B-17 crew based in England. Phelan completed his bomber missions. He went back home to Butte, retrained as a fighter-bomber pilot, and was later shot down in Italy. Phelan's college roommate was Newell Berg. After graduating, he coached Tiny Klein High School near Roundup to the 1942 Montana Class B Basketball State Championship. Marine Lieutenant Berg was wounded in the Battle of Tarawa, later killed on the island of Saipan, less than a year after his older brother was killed in New Guinea. Bernard Clusen was one of 12 children raised in the tiny community of Lone Pine on the Flathead Indian Reservation near Polson. In 1942, a photo of Clusen was featured on the cover of New York Times Magazine. Major Clusen's plane disappeared in the Pacific following a mission in 1944. While in the process of saving a number of his men, Captain Joe McGeever of Anaconda was killed by machine gun fire in France. One of his men traveled to Montana from Vermont after the war to tell the McGeever family what a great man Mac was. He married Joe's niece, stayed, and raised his own family in Montana. After graduating from Montana State, Bozeman's Rick Roman stayed on as an ROTC instructor. Captain Roman was killed in action in France in 1945. The remarks of this article were made by General William Dean, Roman's commanding officer, in a speech in Helena after the war. Just over the hill from Captain Roman on the day he lost his life was Carl Fye from Butte. 
Phi was killed on the battlefield in Germany exactly one month after Roman. The little guy in the picture is Carl's cousin Ken, now a 75-year-old with vivid memories of Carl's funeral when his remains were returned to Butte in 1948. John Hall Jr. was the six foot five center for the basketball team, a B-25 pilot the following year. Born and raised in Bozeman, the Hall family home was on Mendenhall Street, directly across from Hawthorne Elementary. This photo shows Hall saying goodbye to his family in December 1943 on the day he left for England. A week before D-Day, in a sky filled with bombers, one B-24 moved into Hall's B-24. A photographer on the ground caught the collision on film and they were published a few months later in Look Magazine. A 10-man crew in each plane, including John Hall, were lost in the time that this slide has been up on the screen. In addition to these three individuals on the plaque, about 70 former Montana State College students lost their lives in service during World War II, including one of Montana's five Congressional Medal of Honor recipients. Per capita, the state of Montana's World War II losses was one of the highest in the nation. On the first play of the 1941 season, George Wallace of Billings scored a Montana State touchdown. In December, war was declared and football at the college stopped for four years. An ROTC cadet, George knew his life would change as well. And like John Hall, Wallace was a newlywed, newlywed and went to Europe as a B-24 pilot. But George came back. We met up again last week and I told him what I was gonna do tonight. 94 years old, and I'm telling you, he could still play both ways for a full game the way he did 75 years ago. And he knows the real story. And now you do too. 